In today's video, we're going to look at the profit and loss account report in Xero. We have an old style and we have a new style. The old style reports are going to be removed from July 2023. So if you're like me and you're familiar with the old style, this video is worth watching because we do a comparison between the old and the new and hopefully it will help you switch from the old style to the new and you'll see the flexibility that is available in the new style reports. So we're on our Xero dashboard and we're going to go to accounting and we're going to choose reports. There is a huge amount of flexibility with the reports in Xero. A lot of people find that quite confusing. On the financial section, you can see we have two options for a profit and loss account. Xero have old style reports, which say nothing in the right, and then they have new style reports. We're going to choose the old one first. And this is a demo company and I've got information in it for two months only. So I'm going to choose those two months. I'm going to go to compare periods. I want to choose the month of June. It's 2021. I want to look at one a one month period and then I'm going to compare it to the month before. Once I've made those choices, I've also chosen to show year to date figures. I'm going to update. If we wanted to do a little bit of changing on this layout, on the old style profit and loss account in Xero, we can. We would go to layout options, choose a layout, and I can just show you a slightly different layout that I've created. So what I've been able to do with this layout, there's not anything different on the income side, but when you go to the expenses, you can see I've created three different categories. So now I can look at employee costs subtotaled, admin costs subtotaled, and then sales and marketing subtotaled. You might wonder why they've got numbers to the left of them. That's because on the profit and loss account, Xero will put everything in alphabetical order. So if I don't number them, my admin costs are going to appear first, whereas I wanted my employee costs to be first. And you'll see, by preference, I would show the salaries and then the employer's national insurance. But again, here it's in alphabetical order. But that shows you a little bit of the flexibility in your Xero report. I'm going to go back to the dashboard. I'm going to take a quick look at the new reports in Xero where there's even more flexibility. So again from the dashboard I'm going to go to accounting and this time I'm going to choose a report that I've already created. It's a new profit and loss account version 1 just to have a look at it. So I've already said I want the month of June and I want to compare it with the month before. So the same information is on here, but if we just look through it, we'll see a few subtle differences. This time I've got a percentage in here. This profit and loss account layout gives me the option to add a formula and do a calculation for me. Employee costs again are at the top, but this time I don't need a one against them. I can say put employee costs at the top and I've been able to say I want salaries before the employer's national insurance. If I wanted to change this, you can almost see my screen. There's an option here. It says edit layout. And then this is where we, you go on the new style reports in Xero to change your layout. So you can see we've got a header for turnover or sales and we've got our sales categories. If we wanted to move something, so if I said actually, I don't want that to be there, I can move it. So it's easy, as you can see, to move the order around. Better put it back to where it was. And again, this is how I managed to, the default was probably have employer's national insurance and then salaries, but it's so easy to move them around. I can add a column. These icons are meaningful, so I can add text, I can add more information to the report, I can add a footer, I can add rows. But what I'm going to do here is choose this option to add a column. And I'm going to say I want a date column, and then it's not a month that I want, I'm going to say I want the year to date figure. So Xero has automatically now put in May to June as my year to date figure. When I'm happy with that, I say done. If I'd made a mistake, I can X and come out of it. Once I choose done, it shows me what my profit and loss account looks like. So that's how you do a profit and loss account in Xero. What you want to do is have a profit and loss account layout that makes sense to you. Until next time, happy Xeroing.